Welcome back peddlers! Now that I can pedal again, I am of course super stoked to get back on the water, so it's just in time for somebody in my family to get COVID and so now we're quarantined. <clears throat> Apparently, shit happens. I have three kids, and you know kids, they lick everything. I guess. And so it was bound to happen that at some point one of us would catch COVID and we had to stay uh, home. So we've been self-quarantining here for... a little over three days right now and I'm going insane. But to prevent myself from completely losing my mind, I'm doing what everybody does when they're in quarantine watch Netflix. And of course there has been this little movie on Netflix called The River Runner and I haven't seen anything about it because I was sort of waiting to make a video about it. Now luckily I have sort of a movie theater back here so let's put it on and let's watch it. Let's talk about it. Okay, so for those who haven't seen the movie yet, of course, in the next bit I'm going to talk about the movie, so there are gonna be some spoilers, I guess, if you can spoil a documentary. So go watch it yourself and then come back to this video, of course. And if you haven't already, make sure you like this video and subscribe to the channel while you're at it. For those who haven't watched the film, it's about Scott Lindgren's lifelong journey to pedal all four rivers that sprout from the Tibetan mountain Kalash. And the film really focuses on his life story. He grew up in a rough neighborhood, never really dealt with his emotions and with everything going on in his life. And eventually it ate him up, perhaps even literally as he developed a tumor in his brain and got really sick and had to give up on this dream. And so the movie is really about how he healed himself, well, perhaps through kayaking and through well, opening up to the world. Needless to say, that is a very different movie than I expected to see. What I saw from all the posters and the things, I thought it was just a movie about doing sick shit and hucking waterfalls. As months went by, he just has become a really good friend of mine. Spent the better part of my kayaking career ostracizing any form of weakness. And here I was, by far the weakest link. And my friends and the kayaking community didn't ostracize me. This was really one of my favorite moments. It's about coming together, you know, helping each other build each other up instead of taking each other down. It, it really hit me because, again, it drives home the idea that we as kayakers, we are a family and we're here to help each other, support each other, teach each other. That's, that's in essence why I started this channel and why I am doing what I'm doing is, is to help other people and to to, to build other people up. And when you watch the film and you see his early life, it's all really about clashing egos, being first, you know, if you're weak and you can't handle stuff, get the hell out of here. And then you see that mentality and that sort of viewpoint on life destroying him, basically, and destroying his career. And at the end, when he meets this younger generation and this new idea of what kayaking is and how we work together, you could tell that it changed his life. And so there is no shame in knowing your limits and knowing when you have to give up. You know, that mentality, I think, is super important because there is no shame in giving up. I always say if it stops being fun, stop. You know, you don't have to do certain things to prove yourself. And of course, in getting better, you always have to push your boundaries and, and, and sort of creep up on your limits to grow and to get better at certain stuff. But that does not mean that you have to cross certain boundaries where, where you're not comfortable. And that's exactly where good friends come in to help you safely and with confidence cross those boundaries that you might have in order for yourself to grow. But if you always look at life like, if you can't make it on your own, get out, nobody benefits from that. 
thinking about that favorite moment, I was also thinking about what's my least favorite moment about the movie. I mean, it's sort of turning into a movie critique right here. And I think my least favorite part of the movie was where the love story showed up. I, I love a good sob story. I'm a big crier at movies, you know, whatever. I'm vulnerable. But yeah, I think they could have cut the whole love portion, especially since they, spoiler, didn't end up with each other. Well, the love thing. And the people dying. It's like, kayaking is not without risk. We are on the water, things can happen. That's why we train, that's why we practice, that's why we never go out alone, that's why we wear our PFDs. We take all the safety precautions, precautions of course, but still you are at the mercy of nature. And if you look at the waves and the rapids and the things they conquered, it's like, Wow, that is some serious, crazy stuff. And especially back in the day when the technology of the boats, paddles, safety gear wasn't what it is right now. It was, of course, even more dangerous. But it's... I, uh, I got shivers watching that first part when they talked about um, their friend dying. It's... Whoa, I, I can't even start to imagine what it's like when you're on the river with your friends and, and and all of a sudden your friend's gone and you never find him back again. And even thinking about it makes me, phew, no, so yeah. Things like this happen and that's why we need to learn from certain situations and that's why we always need to stay focused. We need to practice, keep your safety gear ready and just, you know, stay safe, stay safe peddlers. I very slowly started having conversation. The more I started to talk about it, the more healing started to happen. I could feel that vulnerability was strength, it wasn't weakness. And vulnerability was the way forward. In the end, I think the biggest takeaway from this whole thing is that physicality and mentality and your physical health and your mental health they are they're not separate things they are one thing it's good that this story gets told and that it's not just a movie about doing sick stuff in a kayak hucking down waterfalls but it's it, it's about if you want to do because don't get me wrong the rapids they take are like crazy they do super crazy stuff but if you want to do that and if you want to have that capacity and you want to be on the top of your game you also have to be on top of your mental game and I think Scott is a classic example of that and and this this movie really really portrays that in a beautiful and exciting way and especially one for a kayaker like me since this whole video turned into a movie critiquing anyway, let's end with the recommendations. Would I recommend this movie? Definitely, if you are a kayaker. And also, if you're not a kayaker. A story like this and the lessons that Scott has learned and that you get from the movie, you can apply to other parts of life as well. So overall, I would say 5 out of 5. Great film. Go watch it. It's on Netflix. Um, just go watch it. And that's all that I have for you today, peddlers. If you like this video, please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you want to see more. I'm still in quarantine, have to stay in for a couple of more days, but c'est la vie. In any case, I hope to see you on the water soon and don't forget to pedal on. Mm -hmm.